last night a friend reached out to me and I was really surprised to hear that he's been going through a lot of struggles throughout the past year or two. And, you know, it's gotten to the point where he's now seeing a therapist on a weekly basis. And a lot of it was caused by his abuse of alcohol and uh, drugs at one point. And it just really, uh, it kind of shook me to hear that a buddy that I haven't stayed in great contact with, but still love, um, is dealing with such a hard thing. And, you know, it just got me thinking how there's such a stigma attached to depression and mental health in general right now in society. And as somebody who has struggled with depression in the past, you know, it's it's something that I feel compelled to to kind of share my insights on and just to kind of open up some dialogue in regards to it because there's not nearly enough going on. Um, and to be completely honest, I think that depression is, is an epidemic right now in our society. It seems to be getting worse. Uh, I don't know that we are finding great solutions or ways to combat it. And I know I've seen studies and statistics that talk about how depression and anxiety and all these different mental health issues on college campuses is rampant. And um, yet we, we can't find a way to, to alleviate these issues. Um, and it should come as no surprise that college students are super depressed. I mean, we're going to school full time. We're working. We're, school is outrageously priced. We're all going in to debt above our heads, um, you know, it's it's a really vulnerable season of life to be in college. Um, so, I mean, I could make a whole new video about how we should have free education like Denmark or at least much more affordable education, but I'm going to stay on topic here. But, you know, it's depression is pervasive in society right now, and, and we need to start talking about it more. There needs to be something done. And I don't know exactly what that is, but we can't keep pushing it aside and making people feel like they're outliers because of what they struggle with in their mind. You know, I think social media plays a big role in it too. You know, we're, we're all over our Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and comparing our lives, our, our everyday life with other people's highlights. You know, it's not healthy. And I don't think that's, um, you know, that's nothing that people struggled with in the past because they didn't even have that as an option, you know? Um, so I just don't understand why in 2017, it's still taboo to talk about mental health. You know, you hear the word depression, you're like, whoa, um, or somebody's bipolar or schizophrenic, you know, a lot of times like people, these are, these are biological, they're, they're genetically predisposed to these things. It's not like you wake up one day and you choose to, to struggle with um, mental health. You know, it, it, it happens. And um, at the end of the day, it's okay to not be okay. I think that's something that a lot of people need to hear. It's okay to not be okay. And if, if you have to take medication in order to feel okay, or at least approach homeostasis, that's perfectly okay too. There's there's reasons we have doctors. There's reasons we have medication in this world. Um, you know, I'm not a huge proponent of it because I think more so it masks the problem rather than alleviating it. But you know, it, if it's working in the short term, we can we can work with that and then find some other things that uh, like CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, that might work in the long term. But um, we need to start treating mental health like we treat every other disease, whether it be diabetes or cancer. You know, somebody who struggles with mental health shouldn't have to feel like they can't talk about it or as if it's their fault that they struggle with that. You know, cancer comes out of nowhere a lot of times. Diabetes, you can be born with that. And the same goes for mental health. So I really hope that um, somebody hears this that maybe has been struggling with this and 
just know that it, it's not your fault. And there are so many ways that you can help to remedy what's going on. And uh, just a few things that I know from personal experience that can really help with mental health. Um, I'm really all about just kind of trying to be 1% better each day. So if I'm struggling, um, I want to be just a little bit better the next day and then keep doing that. And over a period of time, man, you're, you're going to be back to normal uh, sooner than you know it. So one thing that is huge for me is nature. Uh, I think we're meant to be outside at least a lot of times. You know, we're not meant to be behind a desk from nine to five, five days a week. That's bullshit. Um, that's just what society tells us we need to do. And, and yeah, we need to make a living, but man, being outdoors, listening to the birds, feeling the wind, seeing the trees, I, there's something healing about nature. And, uh, I'll, I'll say that until the day I die. Um, also cultivating gratitude is essential. You need to find things that you're, you're thankful for in your life. Even when you feel as if it couldn't get much worse you probably still have loving parents. You've got good friends. You live in America. I mean, let's be honest. There's not a lot of places in the world better to be born and raised than in America. Um, and at the end of the day, man, you're alive. We only get one chance at this thing called life. And yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it sucks sometimes. But what, what were the odds that you actually were conceived when you were conceived, that you were born all of the things, the fact that your parents even met, man, it's crazy. This this thing called life is beautiful. It's the most amazing opportunity. Uh, I, I take it for granted every single day, and I'm still working on finding more gratitude for this life. Um, cold showers can work really, really well. Uh, I think there are scientific studies that show that just uh, the neurology when you take a cold shower, it can help you focus. It can help to alleviate depression and anxiety uh, marginally. Uh, there's there's a lot of benefits to it. And also, like when you wake up in the morning, why not do something that's super challenging so that you can get in that habit of doing challenging things throughout the day? And then the last thing that I think helps to remedy depression and, and other battles that we face is just connection. Connection to people, connection to nature, connection to family. Um, I really do think that connection is, is the cure. I think it's the antithesis to depression. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of power in positive people. So find them, hold on to them tightly and, and don't let them go because, um, yeah, that's, we all need positivity in our lives. And, and you know, it, it's cliche, but they say we, we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And I'm a firm believer in that. So if you're around toxic people, people that bring you down, make you feel bad about yourself, change that. Find people that help you grow, that support you and encourage you as you face your challenges and, and try to overcome the obstacles that this life presents. Appreciate you watching this video. My name is Derek Stark. Have a great day.